I will follow him. <laughs> follow <laughs> him wherever <laughs> he may go. There, there isn't, isn't an ocean to deep. A <laughs> mountain to a so Welcome to the Bushwick Bears go. podcast. We almost, we almost, we almost yeah, did that. it. That's a great song. I don't know that song. Ba 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 and where he goes, I'll follow. I'll follow. You seen Sister Act? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da 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 From now until forever, forever, forever. All right, we got two intro songs. Um, a little welcome, uh, Bushwick Bears podcast. My name is Jericho Davidson. Boris Hyken right here. Derek we, Humphrey. We were gonna do a song. We were gonna make yeah, an we, actual song. We oh, like make a theme the, song. Make a theme song for the podcast. We really followed through on that one. We, didn't we, we? still <laughs> can, but, but no, we still can. But I feel like this is just our thing. It now. is going kind of well it's until I someone. Like this. <clears throat> no one can sue us for singing a little piece. If of you listen song. to the podcast, tweet at us, Instagram us, email us, whatever. Request. Put in her view. <laughs> Just now, yeah, you can make a request for a song, or you could just be like give us our your honest feedback and be like, you guys should make a song. I don't know who cares. It's, it'll be fun. It'll be fun regardless. It would just be fun to make a song, or like, maybe somebody out there wants to make a theme song for us. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. That, that would be fun. cool. Um, it's not as if like one of our members isn't a drummer in a band. <laughs> I I'll, like I said, I I'll make. The, I think it'd be a funny video to make. The three of us can make a song really easily. Yeah, well, like a like a really quick, yeah, ten second little yeah, easy. theme, a little a little uh, a jingle, if you will. Yeah, um, we were talking about um, some regional delicacies from from where Derek used to live. Um, some cackalaggy, some some, <coughs> some whole hog barbecue, some pulled whole hog. I pulled thought we were talking pussies though. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this was this was all a euphemism. Was, um, hey, yo, I uh, I love. I, I'm from two. I'm originally from Tucson, Arizona, and it has some of the best food in, on the fucking planet in Tucson. And I'm ex- so excited. I hope. I hope that's the only reason I don't want there to be a full shutdown. Is that when I'm there Go for the holidays, I can some, eat some fucking tacos. Yeah, get some bidia and some fucking. Carne Seca? Oh my goodness. Uh well you'll be quarantining most of the time anyway. Two though. weeks, right? Is that right. what it is? Yeah, you gotta quarantine while you're there. Quarantine inside a taco truck? Yeah, absolutely. That's where I plan on quarantining. Through. Remember remember uh who who was it that said that it was like, Well, if we don't if we don't build a wall, there'll be a taco truck on every corner. There was somebody that said uh, that. Yeah, somebody, that sounds somebody, awesome. Somebody, somebody, and I was like, That sounds dope, man. Yeah, yeah. that sounds really cool. If actually. there's demand for it. Yeah, I would love um, a taco truck in my neighborhood. I don't even have a good bodega in my neighborhood. Yeah, that's a, you gotta you always gotta find it. Um, I like there's a lot of good food in Boris's neighborhood. Yeah, there's a ton of good shit here. Good for, there's not really any, there's not much of where I live either. There's one or two good places. My bodega sucks. I had to walk. I had literally I had a hankering for a bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, and I had to walk eight blocks because they're all uh, none of them have pork. Oh, uh, I don't want. Yeah. I'm not gonna have right. no turkey bacon or beef bacon. Come I on. don't even know where I can get one of those in my na- off my stop. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, there might be a place. I mean, there, there. Actually, I take that back. It's a, there. It's a couple blocks, and it sounds medio like minute, but they're like long blocks. They're avenue blocks. Yeah, it's like three blocks, and you're just kind of like the Queens thing. blocks. Yeah, Queens blocks are bigger blocks. That's what I've heard. You know. Big old blocks <laughs> out in um, Queens. I, I the uh, the bodega right across the street from my house just started selling beer, and I was like, I was looking at the guys. It's like, oh, he's selling beer now. He's like, these are hard times, and we want to keep up. We gotta, we gotta sell beer. I was oh, like, did they used to be like religiously? Yeah, they were originally against that. When I looked at him, I was like, well, what about pork? He goes, no, we're not going that far. <laughs> yeah. like, Damn. Maybe in the fourth wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it keeps up how it is, they'll start making some bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. That that really is the regional New York food. Like this day and age, because I'm like on a bagel. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's. I mean, that's like you, we all have specific. You know what my my bacon, egg, and cheese order is? What my perfect bacon, egg, and cheese, bacon, egg, cheese, hash brown. Hot in, sauce in the sandwich. In the oh, sandwich. In the I like sandwich. that. Yeah, hash brown good. in the sandwich, and then I like it on a Kaiser roll personally. I I like the hash I love brown a Kaiser move. Roll. Um, I hollowed out poppy seed bagel. Ooh, yeah, nice. I, I like that's that. what I go so, with. I like the hollowed out move. Yeah, 
I'm um, a bougie ass bitch, so I actually bougier than hollowed <laughs> out poppy seed. That's pretty maybe bougie. maybe scooped out. I have um, uh, actually go turkey egg and your breakfast sandwich, pepper jack cheese, tomato. Whoa, wilding out. Uh, a small smear of uh, schmear may- mayonnaise. Small nice. swipe of shout out to the Jews yeah. on a brioche bun. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. You specific. know, if I switch the meat of which I would often, I would do either pork roll, love okay. a good pork Ooh, roll, yeah. or Taylor Jersey, ham. Jersey coming. Taylor in, ham, baby. depending where you're from, or uh, just breakfast sausage. I like a good breakfast I, sausage. Th- there used to be at this breakfast restaurant in Tucson. They had the heart attack sandwich. Which yeah. I always loved, which was ham, <coughs> bacon, and sausage, egg, and cheese. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, the fucking bagel place over on um, on Bedford in Williamsburg. They had the hash brown in the sandwich too. Somebody's gonna get hungry oh listening to this podcast. I'm getting hungry oh, eating yeah. it because it, it takes me back to when uh, I used to drink and I used to get up in the morning. I'd walk to the bagel place on the corner of South Fourth and, and Bedford. And I would get one of these amazing fucking bagel sandwiches had the hash yeah. brown on the, the inside. The hash brown, I, I love the hash brown inside. I do that with my omelets, too. Oh, yeah. if, like at a diner uh, omelet. Ooh, love That's it. how I test them if they're really good. I ask if I if they could do the hash browns on the inside of the omelet. And I'd say like 70% of the time, they're like, yeah, no problem. Maybe they'll even be like, it's too much to put it all in, so we'll leave you some on the side, too. I'm like, fantastic. Perfect. I love you. Uh, but then the other 30% is th- it's just that look on their face where they're just like, uh, I don't, <laughs> I can ask the chef. I don't, I was like, all right, if I'm the first one and it's going to fucking confuse everything well, in the kitchen, like, don't worry about that's it. That's like the, definitely like the New York thing. Cause pizza there is, de- they're doing it wrong. There's phenomenal pizza in New York, but you can get good pizza anywhere these days. I don't know. Not about that. anywhere, but a lot of places have <laughs> yeah. good pizza. Like, I've had Neapolitan style coal oven pizza in right. other cities. And I've had the slices and like hot dogs, the New York hot dog thing, that's so old school. Like you don't even hot dogs you can get anywhere. You can yeah. get anywhere in hot dogs. Yeah, Detroit has better hot dogs than New York. You like the Coney's? You like the Detroit I Coney's? I do like the Coney's even though their name is bullshit ass fucking. I, I love a Detroit Coney, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. You La- Lafayette or All American dog? All American. You go all American. All right. I'm a Lafayette, Lafayette guy. So Coney's is basically just a chili cheese dog. Not even chili cheese dog. It's a it's a hot dog with chili, uh, diced onions, and yellow mustard. I'm down with that. I like yeah. that better than ketchup. I'm not really a ketchup guy. I'm not a, I'm not a ketchup guy on I, a hot dog either. In Chicago, I, went to, I can't remember the name of it. I wonder if they're still around, but they had like alligator. They had kangaroo, which was oh, not great. Words. I did not like No, kangaroo. kangaroo's not good. I had it in a Malta. Yeah, it, it had like a kind of weird smoked, but like overdone. Super gamey. Yeah, really tough. I've Chewy. Had alligator, sauce alligator was good, was good yeah. but kangaroo was not. Never, kangaroo never was kangaroo. weird. Uh, what else did they have? That dog in New Orleans has all that shit. Yeah, they have all that. Fun little party spot. I um, love animals so much, and, and like especially when they're on my plate. And... Uh, <laughs> Because I, I like I I'd never want to see harm done to an animal, but then somebody's like, "There's duck on the menu." I'm like, "Awesome!" You know <laughs> what? Here's a current events thing. Actually, they opened the first restaurant. I was just reading about this today in Israel. That's lab grown meat. Would you fuck oh, with that? Yeah. Interesting. It yeah. is. It is only chicken right now. They haven't figured out like a, a realistic steak or whatever yet. Yeah. But it's all the chicken is grown in a lab. I'm down with it. It I doesn't think, seem no. that different than what fast food does. I think you if know? you ate it a couple times, and you didn't it. notice I don't any eat difference. Fast food, though. I try to stay away from fast food, but like I do think eventually I have no problem with eating animals. But I think eventually once we have the option to eat some shit that was grown. Without some stuff might even be worth farming still, but let's say there's something where like it's just not good to like yeah. farm it and have it be taking up land and doing whatever the way that we do it, and we're able to just have a fucking like warehouse that grows the shit and it's nutritionally and taste wise you can't differentiate between the two. That's that's I'm the all, future. Yeah. I mean, I'm all. That's got to be the future. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It doesn't. I'd, I'd rather Ted Kaczynski that whole system. <laughs> you will fly a building, <laughs> fly a plane into that building. I, yeah, that's when we start to get like, I think it's just gross because like Elon Musk, I like until he starts talking about, well, there's people going to get you have to get like a chip put in your head. And they're like, well, what if I don't want to? The and it's neural like, well, net. You're never going to be like you're going to get left behind or whatever. And it's like, well, 
Maybe I do want to get left behind. Well, I mean, you're 42 years old. And you won't point. be the only one also, though. There's gonna, right. I think that's what's going to happen in the future is, like, we're going to have all this crazy shit because you can't stop it, right? You can't stop it. There's going to be enough people that are willing to connect to these neural nets. They're yeah. going to be, like, writing software and creating shit that's just, like, it's it's already hard for people to keep up in certain ways, right? This goes back to, like, the sure. yang shit we talk about. But then I think that there's going to be tons of communities that are going to start popping, popping up, and it's already happening in a way that are, like, not like Luddites, but like against like they draw the line at certain aspects, and there's probably going to be tons of different I'm cultures. I'm going to be the um, Amish, yeah, version of that. So gonna just well, being that's, Amish that's in the saying. future is going to be like owning a owning a an Apple, an iPhone, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I only want them tracking me with a thing I can throw out and put down, but not from the inside of my own skull. <laughs> that's where <laughs> this one young lady came by to walk our dog. Um, once Humble and brag. she took a shut up she took a <laughs> she took a polaroid of the dog our hired help came by the other day she took a polaroid of the dog she took a polaroid of the dog and i guess that's the thing that kids do now the young kids do yeah is because it is Permanent. Well, it's kind of neat, also, right? It like it's physical, right? Exactly. We yeah. almost thought about getting Polaroids at our wedding, but it actually seemed like a big pain in the ass to try to get enough and whatever. But, um, yeah, it's kind of like it's retro, but also people want to like people are getting offline, you know? People, are, yeah. especially with COVID, I feel like people yeah. are learning to connect with people in front of them and realizing how valuable that is compared to the fake shit online and like yeah. the antagonistic shit online. I yeah. think there's going to be so much more of that, and I think people... Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hungry. Sorry. What did you... What are, what are you storing in there? Don't worry about it. All that. right. All right. <laughs> no, all that talk of, of, of bacon, egg, and cheese has got yeah. him. Um, well, he just I has a just, bacon, egg, and cheese under his jacket. <laughs> I think it's just depressing to be online through the pandemic. Like, I want to be... I mean, like, I guess like, we still need to put content out. As I wrestle with this every day through the pandemic. Is like... We still need to put content out. We're going to put this fucking podcast out. The only way we're going to let people know about it, if they haven't subscribed already, rated and reviewed. And sent the, it to five friends who hopefully will each send it to five yeah, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and CC the Nigerian prince. <laughs> and, um, and so it's like this perpetual cycle of like, oh, I need to be on there because I need to put stuff out there to let, rem, rem, like remind people I'm still there. Yeah. And it's like... But like I also I stare at it all fucking day. I think the key is and I don't do this. So this is like do what I say, not as I do. But I think the key if we're trying to use it in a professional way would be to like I'm going to do it between these hours. Right. I'm not going to like play with it on my phone in between those hours. I be, I'm going to write down the tasks I need to accomplish on it. I accomplish those tasks on it. Like not, I'm not capable of doing it. I don't have the self-control and I'm not doing any of it. By the way, I just watched Social Dilemma. Have you guys seen that? No. Yeah. I was not as impressed. Like everybody's like, you got to see this shit. It's fucking crazy. And it was well done, but it's mostly kind of like just showing you basically social media is addictive. <laughs> like common sense shit, right? It's all shit you already Sort know. of, but in no. surprising ways of like how much work and how much technology is being put into use to stay a step ahead of you so that what you think you can do with sheer self-control they make the argument that like you don't stand a chance basically like your brain is meant for like you know being in the fucking jungle or in caves and not to have this type of like supercomputer constantly creating content that's trying to lure you into yeah. whatever. anyway they but they spend a lot of time like 90 percent of the movie basically telling you this thing that you know but in like maybe an interesting detail and then a little more and then 10 minutes being like and this is the solution and they don't really explore it they don't explore the bad effects that could be the solution their solution is government regulation <laughs> basically or like i've heard the idea of like the government creating their own social me like a public option for social media of yeah. source but their conclusion is just like government needs to regulate it and i'm like maybe that's the solution maybe not but you just spent like so long going over the problem and such a short amount of time going the over the solution thing about social media and like the, the effects it has on the populace to me is that it's voluntary right you know, it's, 
Yeah, but th- yeah, but that fear of missing out on something in society is so big. Like the FOMO is yeah. real. No, it's no, it's no, voluntary. No. I think it's just like everybody's got their own battles in life, and some people find it more difficult to like control their eating. Some people mm-hmm. find it difficult to control their drinking. Social media is just one that, like, by nature of what it is a good portion of society finds it difficult to control themselves. It's not everybody. I know people who fucking have kids and they're like, yeah, I don't fuck with that shit anymore. I got better things to do. I got a child to raise. And then I know people that like got better shit to do and yet they're fucking staring at it or they're even worse involving their children in that shit. So, so what are you, you're trying to say you guys both, we all should have children. Uh, No, (laughs) I, no, I think there's a filling ways to live life offline. Uh, yeah. Guys, I want to adopt a child with the two of you. Yeah. It'll be the Bushwick Cub. Yeah. We'll be heroes. We'll be the only comedy group that's adopted a human <laughs> child and raised it to be a super comedian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just treat it like, like the Russians or the... Um or the Chinese tree athletes. Right, know? exactly, <laughs> dude. <laughs> they <laughs> Hours a day they practice <laughs> joke writing. Yeah, it's the Dolph Lundgren of kids. Oh, <laughs> like man. From Rocky Four. Yeah, it's the three of our sperm combined that was put in a lab. <laughs> it's be one dumb kid. <laughs> um, but sure is funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, the th- yeah, that's the thing, though, too. And you're, I'm kind of like, like, who... I saw like oh everybody was dragging Tim uh, Tim Allen on Twitter yeah. for what because he said uh, what could possibly what could he do <laughs> because he's a conservative yeah and yeah, he yeah. and Twitter's not the it's place called Last Man Standing I've seen it I've never seen <laughs> it but Twitter Twitter's not the place for like a yeah, conservative I tra- comic I, I travel I I've been in hotels before yeah <laughs> it's the only place and I've so he's he's that. he wrote Karl Marx he spelled the Karl wrong Karl Marx <laughs> <It's> hilarious <laughs> communism Wikipedia. I saw that tweet, and it's right. also like oh, you so know you're faking up top. I just didn't realize, like I forgot about it, but I did see that tweet. Yeah, but that okay. So so anyway, so then I look through <laughs> at, Tim, at Tim Allen's fucking Twitter and the rest of it, and he's got you know a million followers now. Tim Allen's rich as fuck. Yeah, like he was getting ten million dollars an episode. He's got that home improvement, improvement money plus Buzz Lightyear. And he's like something else too. Back when he the was last employable, man standing, last man standing, going, think, yeah. that and that's him. You right, know. they canceled that because of political stuff, but right? But it, it had back, an audience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's got. So he's got you know at least a hundred million dollars. Okay. I'm sure laying around or whatever, and and he's on Twitter getting like <laughs> two hundred and seventy retweets, and then probably getting mad about. It. I'm like, you won. Like you won, <laughs> you don't need to be on Twitter, Tim Allen. You don't need. You're you don't not need connect- to fight the communists. Because yeah. if he's like, because and 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 this is not even to say it, like I disagree with him. I think if you're like some kind of uh uh you know if, whatever your political spectrum is or whatever, if you're rich or if you just are, can, are you that sad that you need to go on Twitter and be like. Oh, I wonder what these dumbass kids who haven't done nothing are. I will say that. this. You know what I've noticed, especially with right wing people on the internet? And this isn't all of them, but the ones that I see on my feed, there's also a comic who's a cop who posts right wing shit all the time. And uh half- sounds hilarious. No. Oh. Uh and uh and half of it is like uh you know, conservative memes and half of it's literally fake news. And I'm not the type to like throw that around, but it's just nonsense that if you Googled, <laughs> it's like written in a photo so that you can't copy and paste it easily so that you just share it. Right. But you could Google it and find out that it's false. But you know what? I see this guy posting it all. It's like, or like resharing a video of like some Antifa guy getting served or something, but it's like constantly, oh, like it's constantly on his feed and he's friends with comics. And a lot of them are like Jersey road dogs, but then yeah. some of them are like comics. He happened to meet elsewhere that are actually like willing to comment and try to argue with him. I have not seen him reply once. This guy does not live on Facebook. He goes on Facebook, shares some crazy shit onto the world, and literally moves on with his day. And it, I find it fucking hilarious. It is funny. That he's not, no one's changing his mind because he's probably not even reading their, co- like I've never, <laughs> right, I've ne- yeah. even people that agree with him, I've never seen him like a comment. I've never seen him respond to a comment. He just goes on, shares some shit that supports his like narrative of the world that spreads the propaganda that he wants, and just moves on. Right, and I admire those people as well because they just clearly don't care. They're like, and here's you have a bunch all of these bullshit. People who are like hyper online, 
who that's all they care about. Right. Me falling under that. As much as I try to stay off of it, I am hyper online because I have a desk job where I'm forced to stare at two fucking screens all day. Right. You know. God forbid you did some writing. I do do writing. <laughs> that's why you got I, something done. That's why I book so much. <laughs> Um, um, that's not writing. <laughs> writing emails to get booked isn't writing. <laughs> Anyways, no, no, you're right. No, I, I, I do. I try to. It's I don't. I don't like to write at home. I like to go to a cafe, like a, any other little wa- wannabe artist. No, it's nice. I, to I be wear in my I wear my Antifa cap to <laughs> a uh, to a little Brooklyn coffee shop, and then I write dick jokes and pretend <laughs> I'm changing the world. Um, but yeah, there's a happy medium, but uh, there's nothing wrong with, aside from the fact that, you know, he's like spreading nonsense out into the world, but like, there's nothing wrong with having that relationship with Facebook and Twitter where it's like, this is not the real world. This is a bunch of bullshit. People can argue it if they want to. I'm going to go on once in a while and post whatever the fuck comes to mind. Who gives a shit? Cause he's also like, you know, he's got a job. He's not trying to like break out and get an opportunity from comedy central or somebody who, if they looked at his online presence for five seconds would be like, we're not hiring this. person." Oh man. Yeah. Cause I had a, I had a person tell me, in the voiceover industry that they look, they like Facebook stalked me. Yeah. And then they're, cause I was talking with them and they're like, so you're a comic con or whatever. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, I know I read through your shit or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, okay. That is how that works. That's right. And like, I don't have anything on my Facebook that's like, but I don't honestly, I don't even know if that's like a, part of the professional experience with no, it because or just the assistant happened to be like oh let's see who this Derek guy is well no it's more uh i've gotten this now it's more that like they don't want to sit there and and you be a risk of you know the nick mullen story no i don't oh nick mullen um got uh cast in an ibm commercial oh super bowl commercial uh huh. Paid him one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Wow. And then he went on Twitter and was like <laughs> talking about it was how Nick Mullen. Yeah, it was like it, uh, like some you know making fun of Watson or some shit like that. And they took the money out of his account. What? Yep. And so he there's I my brother sent it to me, and um it's a it's a clip on YouTube. That's crazy. They didn't Google him first because he's very he's super funny, but obviously oh, he's, he's gonna hilarious. have stuff they he, might not like. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so. And so that's what they that's what they want to avoid is that sort of stuff. Or they don't want all of a sudden a Seth Simons like character to come up and be like, Derek Humphrey said this word, whatever the context was in 2011. And therefore, he's an evil person. Take his money. Yeah. It's so funny because when you first say that, I'm like, well, but you'd have to be famous like a Gilbert Godfrey. But you're right. Some now there are people who will make sure for whatever reason to like take the time to be like no 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 it doesn't matter who you are right yeah 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 low i mean it's low hanging fruit you you, you guys haven't already you haven't scrubbed your twitters and facebook yeah i, deleted I will not it. i stand by every tweet <laughs> let it be known i did i i mean out of all of it i deleted two tweets i delete stuff if i don't find it funny i well i just haven't looked through but if i happen to I, see I something i believe in myself enough that i went through and scrubbed my twitter I did not, I'm and I I believe in myself that much more <laughs> that despite it, I watched one video of one social media guy who said every month to three months he's like I delete all my old tweets. Brian, he, I'm not trying to be a social media guy. Though, no, no, know? no, 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 no. But I mean, like, uh, well, okay, he's a political pundit or whatever, but right? You know, he like has this like opinion thing or whatever, and he's got three hundred thousand followers. And you know, he's like, I read some of his writing. I considered what he said, and it was basically just like, he's like, you know, you're you're like being held accountable to thinking a thing that you thought maybe even in passing a few years ago. Right. You have new information. Your opinion might change. You might be a completely different person. You know. Like, yeah, I agree with all that. For that reason, I don't want to bend at the knee to that shit but i get it i get why no, people no, i like, mean like i don't give a fuck oh. well here's the thing is like yeah well because i like say i were cast in something and seth simons did ruin it for me how shane gillis handled it was great but me as a 42 year old man that this being probably my last shot in the industry you would murder him i would murder him <laughs> i would i would choke uh, yeah i would kill him and and uh <laughs> and over what and the guy doesn't know me he could sit there and be like well one time Derek humphrey tweeted out like I got, there were years and years. Wait, if I was like either, in but the you Navy, say faggot on this podcast, they'll find you for that. Yeah, fine, whatever. But 
I'm saying contextually that he took it out of context with Shane Gillis. For years and years, I, I got called uh, the N-word by a, a bunch of my black friends, whether it was playing basketball or at work at the liquor Quit store bragging. or whatever. No, no, no. It's just it's in passing <laughs> or whatever. And uh, and so I I'll, I'll, I'll might tell it in a story. And so like or whatever, I use it in context. And like I used to do it all the time because it happened all the time. And like, but he's going to take that out of context and like try and use it against me. It's like, well. I'm not going to give you the opportunity. I hate to tell you, but these days he could try to use it against you in context. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't agree with it. <laughs> oh, I don't. What? Well, you, I'll show you. I mean, like uh, if it's anyways, I'm smart. I'm a smart enough writer to write out what it is I'm thinking or saying or what's happening without it being racist. Right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that's, but are you not racist enough? <laughs> no <laughs> the only thing I mean, it's so weird hearing you guys talk about this so in depthly because all i really use social media for in this day and age is just to find people i used to sleep with and jerk off on pictures of what they, <laughs> or what they look like in 2012 uh-huh, this guy needs a hobby <laughs> i know it's, he's home it's alone true. all day uh i uh no i stopped reading comments there was a thing do you remember this was years ago what was her name? Natalie. So that she's a comic. She was r- real pretty, not very funny, but she made she was like making fun of fat people. Uh, oh, Nicole Archer. Nicole Archer. Is that her name? Yeah. No, Nicole, it, it was Nicole some, Amir or Marjorie. Some of the name. Nicole Arch, Arbor. Arbor. Nicole Arbor. Nicole That's not Arbor. a stand-up, right? She's That's like a, she got like a famous. She's, she's, yeah. yeah. Right, right, so right, so yeah. I she retweeted something I made making fun of her. It was like she's like good word. She's like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, but I was like, I made this video like as a fat person. This is how I feel about I'm shaming fat shamers as a fat person. It yeah, was, it right. was funny. It was cute. It was whatever. But I, it got a lot because she retweeted. Got a lot of attention. Right. Yeah. And I was started reading some of those comments, and people are so vicious that I'm like. Mind you, I'm naked in this video, <laughs> <laughs> and she's and, and people are saying like, "You're fat. You need to kill yourself. I hope you get diabetes and die, you fat piece of shit." <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, "I made awesome. a joke," and the person I made a joke about liked it and said it was right. funny. Who are you to tell me I need to die? Right. Yeah, like, yeah, fuck you. So I was just like, I can't. You removed it? No, no, I just don't read comments. Oh, okay, my, yeah, no, that's yeah. the healthy response. Yeah, so I think I'll, I'll still put my shit out there. I don't care. Yeah, I I did a thing for um, a uh, a company and they posted it an advertisement. It was anti bullying campaign. They posted it to Facebook. It was anti a great, it was a great video. A bullying. Oh, thank I you. I just said it was an anti bullying campaign. Anti <laughs> anti bullying <laughs> campaign, and there and so they posted it to Facebook. So that's comment centric. Yeah. And so I'm looking through and I'm reading the comments to it. It was about how you shouldn't, if you're a big kid, you shouldn't maybe bully other kids, which is, I, I feel that way. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty shitty to do that. Like fight your well, Doyle rules. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to smack the mic out of your hand. I was, uh, I was trying to you. be funny and bully you. Um, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, Derek. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you missed that one. Obviously, and, uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm like ninety percent of the ones you do take, but ten percent is the difference. I'll admit I'm I'm high enough that I didn't catch on. But um, <laughs> oh, but anyways, and so all the comments would come from guys who were like, who like have like um for the profile picture like Captain America. <laughs> or like, uh, or just, or or even if it's just some Jim Bob trucker guy who's like, he's like, fuck that, like beat kids up. That's the way shit should go. The guy reading this is a fucking pussy, and I would just write back to them. I was like, I bet he is, you know, or something like that, and then like, like have like a little interaction back and forth with them because I'm like, I, I I want one of you guys to just like, please, like. I, like try and talk your shit to somebody who probably could kick your ass. I think it's not a good use of your time, but yeah. I agree with you. It's not. <laughs> and that's why I need to stop doing it. Well, I stopped in doing it entirely, even with people who agree with me, like the, like the people who are posting, like, um, you know, who are like happy that Biden won, which I guess, you know, whatever, we all agree with that sort of thing. But then they're like, have very like, or whatever. No, 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 no. They're like, they'll be like, um, you know, there are all these terrible economic conditions that led to the election of Trump or whatever. And then they'll say something else completely different of like, which I agree with or whatever. And they'll be like, and it's also this other factor. And it's like, well, I don't even want to engage with you, even though I agree with you, because even like taking 
even this minute part of an argument and like having a discussion about it in public is just going to look bad. Yeah. No matter what. And oh, so I yeah. just don't do it at all anymore. Yeah, because you're not even arguing. You're performing once again. Right, yeah. yeah. You know what? Every or, time, I mean, even if you try to be informative, like genuinely informative, it's like... Yeah. What if we What if we made a challenge between... If there was a challenge between all of us that every time we wanted to look at social media, we just did push-ups. You'd get so ripped so fast. Yeah. I think That's it would true. last like two days <laughs> <Maybe>. maximum. <laughs> well, not not that every time that you want to do it because your your body is trained to do it. Like you're you're oftentimes ghost push-ups? looking at your phone. No, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> ghost looking at your phone. Yeah, My yeah. body's trained to do push-ups, bro. My body was trained to do push-ups. <laughs> not anymore. And, uh, and so, so it, like you're going to have the desire constantly. I guess it's more just like when you actually go to pick it up, open it up. And do it. Oh yeah, when you, before you let yourself do it, right? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I don't want to do that many push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'll do that many push-ups. Like it, it would actually force me not to do it. I just think that what would happen is, I would need to look at some point where it's not convenient to do push-ups within a day, and then I would be like, all right, fuck it. I I need to use this right now. This stop playing games. I need to post this joke. <laughs> yeah, I use it for writing, and that's about it. If something gets enough like clicks, likes, or whatever, I'm like, all right, maybe I'll try this later or whatever. Or you know, but for the most part, it's just that and bitching. I have enjoyed watching a lot of comedians move home. <laughs> <laughs> that's been fun. This is your soldiers coming home. <laughs> it's comedians coming home to like relieved parents that are like, yeah. he's quit. We love you so much. Yeah, that makes me happy. <laughs> there was a um, you guys describe. I think it was Boris you described me in the group chat accurately as like Derek is the Hulk, but he only gets mad when he sees undeserving comics get shit on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Succeed, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, or undeserving. I'm sorry, undeserving comics get shit, whatever. Because like that's the source of social media where you're like. I mean, you see a lot of rich white girls or, you know, who are like have snarky Twitters, but not good live acts. Be like they're booked on like every show and all this sort of stuff. I'm just like, ah, this sucks. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, why do I care? They're out hustling. I should be out hustling. That's like that's really Yeah. And everyone's got their mediums True. and yeah. Twitter happens to be good if you can write the right kinds of Twitter jokes. And especially if you got a cute photo in your bio. Yeah, doesn't hurt. I yeah. look cute in my bio photo, but it doesn't I translate. Know. It hasn't been helping me, but you know. But there are a lot of people who are great on Twitter who are also great live too. It's not to it's not to shit the entirety of Twitter in and of itself. There are some people apparently use it great. I just would like to be able to feel like I can still earn a living within the entertainment industry without me having to be on it constantly. Yeah. You know, and because it does take away from your life. I used to read. I read I, I read constantly, but yet I read nothing at all. I have a ton of books at home right. that, I, that I haven't read. My wife's like, you don't read. I'm like, no, I spend all day reading. And it's true because I read news articles all day. I read no, but a book's posts. different. Like, a book's different. It's I don't a read. Commitment. Right. Exactly. And I, I just don't. I remember, you know, I don't feel like as well-rounded or um, interesting a person. Yeah. Because all I'm doing is is sitting at a desk reading fucking tweets all day. I had a good uh, habit when I was taking the subway more of reading on the subway, and then I didn't read for a while during the pandemic, and now I'm just starting to finally get back into some reading. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to start doing that. Well, I mean, once we can actually ride the subways with you know some regularity. Yeah. We have a shit ton of like paperback books in our house, and they just sit there, and I'm like, we need to either use these or... Wipe our asses with them. with them or something, you know. You know what's funny? It's taking up space. I've uh, since we started talking, like, this is how much this has a hold on like our brain. I know, like, it's millions of dollars and hours of of science behind this. I've all I've been thinking about this whole time is McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> all I've been thinking about is is a Big Mac. I truly we did well I don't think it was before we st- it was before <laughs> we started recording we were talking about Big Macs. I will say I don't think I've had McDonald's in at least a decade. I've had coffee from McDonald's. Yeah. Dude. Um, oh. 
and I you know, actually you know what I'm gonna take that back. I probably had it like once in the last decade, and I specifically remember however many years ago being like, oh wow, I'm having a Big Mac again. And I honestly at that point enjoyed like the first third to maybe a half, and by the time I got on the second half of it, I was like, eh, something's not right about this. Yeah, I went one time. I went uh, nine years without having it, and I had it. It was the only thing like that, that was like available yeah. Yeah. on the fucking highway, and it was like through my twenties. I did not. I saw Super Size Me in like two thousand one, yeah, whatever year that came out, and then I I stopped eating fast food like pretty much altogether. I took the wrong lesson from Super Size Me because they were like, we left this hamburger sitting out there. For 30 days. Uh, I'm like, if I eat a 30 day old hamburger, you best be sure it'll be McDonald's. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be like, the hamburger's been in the fridge for a while. Great. Okay. It's fine. That's yeah. McDon- you McDonald's. Its life. It's yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah, I did yeah. eat Chick fil A, though, recently. There's one in Pennsylvania. Mm, Chick fil A is fucking good. It's really good. I we had like we had some on the road. We had like fucking Hardee's or something in, in August. And it's like, it, it's. It's disgusting, and you're just like, oh, I mean, like, yeah, Hardee's. I had McDonald's, and, and and like, I got like sick. Yeah. After I remember, like, all the sugar and like, you take just fucking disgusting fucking shits, and it's like, but every now and again, like, the desire for a fucking because I used to eat it all the fucking time, right? Growing as a teenager and like yeah. growing up, and so then like, so like, even every now and again, like, I want a fucking the taste of a quarter pounder, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, I, I think about like nods. I definitely liked Wendy's more when I was younger and did eat fast food more. And then as far as shitty stuff, man, you guys were talking about sandwiches with stuff in them. I went to Rutgers, which had fat sandwiches. Oh yeah, you were. I remember you telling me about that. It's. I mean, my fat moon no ketchup on a pita was my go-to. What the hell is that? I, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like eggs, French fries, mozzarella sticks. Some sort of meat. I'm not sure if it was chicken fingers or it might have been like pork roll or something yeah. like that. Uh, no ketchup on a pita. And cheese. Or mozzarella sticks, but maybe some other cheese too. Oh, that sounds but awesome. But everything was just a bunch of shit. And what's crazy, those took over Rutgers because there were all these like... You had the grease trucks, which were the actual trucks that were in a parking lot. I don't think they're there anymore even. And then you had, like, Jimmy's, which I think was owned by the same place. And then you had all these, like, little food places, right? You had, like, yeah. sort of bodegas throughout New Brunswick, and they all would have – because everybody wanted fat sandwiches. Everybody who was drunk wandering Rutgers yeah. at 2 a.m. And so slowly, every single well, – there was a pizza pl- – Jimmy's was a pizza place. Jimmy's Pizza, they had fat, sam- fat sandwiches. And then, like, every other place throughout just, like, ended up – Everybody would just come in drunk and ask for it, and they just knew they were losing money by not having it. They had that shit in fucking. They had fast sandwiches in uh, Europe. What? Yeah, Germany. Not like not in that sense. Like not in the same exact like. Yeah. What that is, but just like compared to the American, it's actually like our regular sandwich. Regular sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> now there was these fucking street burgers or whatever, and I fuck. We were in fucking Germany. And uh, they were just available everywhere because street of burgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude just takes them out of his jacket like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. Jack- cheeseburgers with the cheese. in a suitcase, and then like he had to shuffle them, and you had to guess which one <laughs> it was under in order. Which to one get has it. cheese? <laughs> I uh, when I was in Germany, all I ate was fucking donor kebab. Donor yeah, kebab, like shit. crazy, but that, and uh, that's I here. Ate a ton of brats. That's here now. Like, it's gyro. I, this is gyro, right? They just called it donor. It's, like the, it's the the seasoning's different. But there's like legit donor kebab places in New York now. Word, there's the, it's fucking shit. It was wild or curry worst. Best pizza I've ever had in my life was in Germany. Best pizza. Best Peas? pizza. Oh, pizza. pizza. Yeah, pizza. Um, Weird. Yeah, it had a raw egg in the middle. It was fucking ridiculous. Ooh, I've yeah. seen that before. Yeah, it was so fucking. They do that in Germany and France. I miss it. I'm trying to go back to Europe, find my son. <laughs> find your son. <laughs> I think we support that. Everyone here at the Bushwick. Oh, Bears. fuck. I forgot I told that story already. Shit. That does have context to it. You're, you're Damn it, Derek Seth son. Simons. You'll get me. <laughs> Derek's <laughs> illegitimate French son. We're, we're going to find him. Um, Love you, Pierre. <laughs> uh, I just I just picture <laughs> I picture someone that looks exactly like you, but with the beret and like a little mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fucking shitty mustache. What? I need more wine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, I'm like, would I rather start drinking again? Like if I had to choose like a glass of wine or like a, a, a McDonald's meal, which one would I have? Because both are inherently unhealthy for me. 
Yeah. Well, I know a glass of wine is healthier. Ish. Yeah, healthier yeah. than McDonald's probably. Though. I would say so. Oh, for sure, for sure, absolutely. But the being drunk part would, or the hangover would suck. From one glass of wine? Yeah, I haven't drank in two years. Yeah, but I bet. No, 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 no. I promise you. I know. One glass. I promise you. One glass of red wine will give me a huge fucking hangover. I'm probably gonna go to McDonald's after this, and I'm definitely gonna feel like shit. You're gonna. You're gonna have a hangover. You're gonna have a hangover. Like there's there's a there's a hangover when you have that kind of food because McDonald's and that sort of stuff is so much sugar. Yeah. So much refined fucking sugar and salt. Yeah, and, but it's like super refined salt. It's not even like I put a lot of salt, like Malden salt, on my fucking steaks or whatever, because it's like healthy. you gotta have a little crust, I right? Yeah, crust. yeah, 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 yeah. And also, it's not just manufactured horse shit that you're getting in. Fucking. Right, I do get hangovers more easily now, but I've kind of seen some patterns to it where like I need to make sure I drink a bunch of water, and then I know if I have like three like margaritas or something sugary with oh, cheap fucked. alcohol in it, I'm fucked. Yeah. But if I have like two Maker's Marks and I make sure to drink enough water or whatever, like Maker's Mark on the rocks or whatever, and I make sure to drink plenty of water, I'm usually okay. I have solved all of that. By not, <laughs> By not drinking, yeah, and that's not a brag. It's just like it, it's just a sigh of relief. Like it's like I, I man, I had to go to the I, my dentist is in Manhattan, on Madison Avenue, and I went. Um, fuck off! <laughs> it's like the running theme of you guys like accusing me of being rich. <laughs> oh, I only own one home. Some owns two. <laughs> and so, anyways, uh, anyway, so I was walking around Manhattan afterwards. Wait, I don't own two. I have one. Oh yeah, he rents this place. <laughs> yeah, he I pay rent. I pay rent here, bro. He has a vacation home, an investment property, if you will. Yeah, you're actually the the you have the most money because apparently you have enough throw away on rent. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, uh, oh, I was walking around Manhattan, and there are all these like. Nor what normally would probably be kind of douchey filled or business filled and biz- like douchey business guy yeah. filled restaurants because it's near Grand Central and shit or it's in the 30s are empty, but they're like nice bars and whatnot. And I'm like, man, I miss just going in and having a drink, talking to the bartender, writing and stuff right. like that. And it's like it's just I'm, killing time somewhere. It's not even killing. I'm actually more productive in that manner. I'll probably write in a notebook t- um, like. 10 more minutes of stuff and sitting down at, and then I will sitting in front of two computer screens at my For home sure. computer. Yeah. And, and something about like just having like a little bit of wine and letting like letting your guard down a little bit, letting your inhibitions down a little bit or whatever uh, to, to express. Now that. we're getting French, a cigarette perhaps. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I would just have a cigarello. Like, those little, like little <laughs> cigars. Cheese for dessert. We get it. I put my monocle in and make sure. <laughs> you see my handwriting, too. My handwriting's beautiful. You haven't showered in a few days. <laughs> That's a part of French shit I could never get over, which is also not entirely true. Um, that you can't get over it or that they don't shower? That they don't often? shower. They shower often enough. Yeah, as of, often enough is subjective. Yeah, often enough. They also don't, like, don't do labor. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they... they, they Touche. Just, like, they remain so, like, <laughs> neutral through life that, like, they neither get overweight or underweight just by like varying degrees of how much bread they've had <laughs> like <laughs> you just it's one cigarette per loaf of bread and you maintain a oh healthy weight they actually have a healthier breakfast than americans they eat meat and cheese for breakfast yeah it's pretty good and they don't have like the bread and stuff until like or they don't even really do the bread big time like i mean you have a fucking baguette but whatever <laughs> i'd fuck a baguette right now i'm getting hungry <laughs> <laughs> I like I like a good Paris baguette in the city. Delicious. Good little, I like I like regional and local chains. They're good for French toast too. Uh, Paris baguette is? or baguettes in general. Oh, I don't really know Paris baguette. Oh, Paris baguette is like um, like a chain French place. Yeah, in in the city, I just miss the city. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it sounds well. like a French place <laughs> <laughs> that would be in Penn Station. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of what the Penn Station French press would be called. They'd probably call it something dumb like Jean Luc's. Like something that's like not even like a real French thing. La Petite Prance. Oh, wait, no, that's the Little Prince. <laughs> there is, um, 
in Central Park, there's a bathroom sponsored by, uh, what's that one French cha- La Quiton? La Pen Quotidet or yes. something? Yeah, La Pen. Lapan, Lapan, Lapan in the ass. Does anyone know how to pronounce these fucking French chains? Lepon, I didn't take yeah. French. Are they just fucking with us? Let's ask my son. <laughs> 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 they have a bathroom hey, in DJ. Central Park. Dadik. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't know. I think that's a pretty good podcast. Your daddy wants some McDonald's. Yeah, I know. We've been talking about food. I gotta go see my wife. Maybe we can record one of these over a meal one of these days. Yeah, that's a good idea. Wouldn't I don't that, know that people would appreciate. Wouldn't that be nice? To, like, oh yeah, there is that. Us eating. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on a second. Let me tell this story. <laughs> this is great. Uh, yeah, but Anthony Bourdain did it. Yeah, but that was okay. Yeah, Ugly Delicious does it. I think we can make it. We're gonna make a. Bunch but we're not of gonna have food show. that good. Plus, there's a uh, visual. <laughs> <laughs> there's like a visual component to it. Um, yeah, it's we're just gonna have to get two cameras: one for the food, one for us. <laughs> we do like a cooking show show, except it's just us going to fucking Chick Fil A. <laughs> My biggest expense is yes. food. How much money you spend a month on food? A month? Not that much. I'm pretty. I'm pretty thrifty, and I've been going to the store. I'd, I'd say I'd spend. Two to five hundred bucks a month on food. Oh no, shit! Yeah. What about you? Um, probably that much. Probably similar per person. Megan and I. Yeah. Okay. I try to yeah, keep I it around. A problem. I try to keep it at about fifty to seventy bucks a week. Well, here's ours is probably we, especially when restaurants were closed, we were saving a ton of money on food because we go to Costco for starters, so we get shit in bulk. Sure, yeah. And we like, you know, we just cook a good amount. We buy groceries, and then once shit started opening up, we're like, well, we want to support the restaurants that are open in the area, so we probably got to eat like once a week or something. Yeah, we get some. We get something like once a week. We'll get something delivered. Usually like sushi or yeah or delivery like that um and then we have gone out like twice i think but i spend so much money on fucking food it's my one not my one vice but it's like the biggest one do you have any like particularly expensive luxury food items that you buy that's the thing it's not even luxury it's like part of its quantity i've learned over through this quarantine though especially the less active i've been as a person to eat less so i was at a point where i was eating like a shit ton of of like stuff yeah i thought i needed to because or you know, i was trying to get healthy or whatever and it's like i actually don't need to eat as much as i have been i get, i actually get by with eating a lot less however i just want to eat like farm raised organic stuff yeah and that starts to get expensive i'm pretty good I'm, i don't really care that much about farm raised organic but i will get organic milk and eggs because i feel like i can tell sometimes but what I'm good at is, aside from when we do go out to eat, when I eat at home, like, the primary things I eat, especially me specifically, as opposed to the two of us, like, definitely a lot of omelets, which is all cheap. You know what I mean? It's just, like, right, meat yeah, gets in I my freezer, cheese right and eggs. But then me personally, like, my main snack is fucking canned sardines or smoked mussels or sprats or, like, something like that. <laughs> so fucking Straight Russian. over a garbage yeah, or straight a... over the sink. I don't even <laughs> yeah, do dishes. Wow. I have, like, one, yeah. And let me tell oh, you something. Man, in the awesome. in the five years we've been together, the whole time I will always offer for her to try some and not once. And, she's, <laughs> and every time I'm like, you showed these smoked mussels. You like mussels sometimes. And they're all, like, a fucking, like, dollar, between a dollar yeah, and three dollars right. a can. Yeah, and yeah, they're delicious. Delicious, and it's all protein. I'll try, and it's the, smoke, I'll try the smoked mussels. You, you, I really will, because like I eat, like I'll just eat a steak. Dude, any <laughs> especially just, like an ethnic you, grocery store, they have a whole wall of delicious <laughs> canned fish and fish items, and it's like. So, I don't know how people come. It's healthy and it's affordable. You, just, you eat like a Ukrainian immigrant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in some ways, I definitely grew up on like sprats, a lot of anchovies and I don't sprats. Even know what sprats are. It's like a little fish, kind of like fish another shit. type of fish usually comes canned in oil, but I'll get squid in their own ink or squid in, squid in oil or calamari or whatever. They're all a dollar. Th- it's crazy. It's crazy how healthy and affordable it is. And like I said, I've. The one thing I've changed recently that Megan's got fed up where I'll eat it over the sink and then I'll just toss the fucking thing in the recycling. Well, I've I've recently humbled myself to washing the can before putting it in the recycling because I get it. I guess it stinks up. What about the canned uh, Vienna sausages? I did those in the Navy. I, I didn't really. I don't really fuck with those too much. No. I did those in the Navy to like that was my snack when I was trying to lose weight. 
Cause I it's like I carbs hit me so easy and so quick. Like I always always have to go like keto or whatever to like get in good shape. Keto? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. We're all right. We're that's how that's about the bougie time. pronunciation of they call it keto on Madison Avenue now. Keto when I mean. when I talk to my dentist about going keto, <laughs> I know somebody was you thought somebody was giving you a diet plan, but they were just trying to get you to do ketamine. <laughs> Have you thought about keto? Well, that's what I that's what I'm doing for a diet. <laughs> I'm doing ketamine. Um I'm I'm doing intermittent shitting. <laughs> yeah. I'm, you eat whatever you want, but my problem you have is, to shit every two hours. My, my problem is I just get super baked and then I eat like an entire container of peanut butter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like it's like the fucking it's like the flavored Burt's Bees shit. And it's like eight dollars yeah, a fucking yeah, container. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I've already eaten like a twelve dollar steak. I eat a <laughs> lot of peanut butter, but another one, peanut butter, only ingredients, peanuts, maybe peanuts and salt. I don't fuck with the peanut butter where they add a bunch of sugar and stuff. Otherwise it's a great That's snack at night. A fucking big ass spoonful of peanut butter before you go to bed. Yeah, I won't stop at just one. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is on my self control. Yeah. Same but it's a good food. Media. I think at least it goes a long way just keeping your at home like i'll fuck around and get ice cream or whatever when i go out sometimes or desserts but at home i just make sure to only keep shit where i could just even if i snack on it all day worst case it's mostly protein and maybe a little bit of fat mm. you, keto ever heard of it yeah let's do it <laughs> hell right. yeah bush has been Paris. a podcast and we we we're like, the we're, let's boy wrap diet. it up, and then we did like another ten minutes. Hell yeah, we were <laughs> no, talking about good. we got a good shit that I like to talk Valuable about. Valuable yeah. advice. Snacks. We got to go to McDonald's. I like to talk about snacks. I am hungry now. I am yeah. too. Um, well, thanks, guys. All Bushwick right. Bears. Bushwick Bears. Everybody, hit us up on the everything. You, the reviews. Thank you. Send so us much. to Thank five you. friends who can use advice on what fish to eat over a garbage can or sink. <laughs> <laughs>